Hello YouTube. I have been saying for a couple of days now that I was going to do a video brushing some people up on the sex workers rights issue and bear in mind that it's been a while since I made a serious video. I know how I'll go through everything I say with a fine tooth comb many of you can be. I am rusty. I'm also a little rusty concerning the sex workers rights issue and a lot of what I'm going to be saying here is my opinion so I don't uh, claim to speak for all sex workers. This is my understanding of the sex workers rights issue. Okay. The straw being thrown around a lot has to do with the difference between legalization and decriminalization. Um, some of that straw um, sounds like, you know, they want to operate with impunity and not pay taxes. Sex workers pay taxes. Um, I'm most familiar with the strip art industry, so that's what I can speak to most, but I know a lot of dancers save all their receipts from all their outfits, their heels, getting their herded, getting their, their makeup, their nails, all of that stuff, and they do their taxes and they write a lot of that off as a, as a an expense for work because it is. Um, so sex workers do taxes and there are people who are more well versed in this aspect of the issue than I am but a lot of it has to do with um, under the Nevada model which is the model I'm going to be talking about in this video because we're talking about sex work in America and that is the model that is already established in a few counties in Nevada, so there is a precedent for that model. So if legalization ever were to happen, it would probably follow that model. Um, sex workers don't just pay taxes on their work and what they do. Under the Nevada model, it also comes down to having to pay a vice tax for what they do, as if they were a bottle of liquor or a pack of cigarettes. Sex workers are not an inanimate vice like liquor or cigarettes. They're people and they want to be treated as such. So they shouldn't have to pay that extra vice tax on themselves. Um, two, I got it here. <laughs> Excuse me. Two, legalization as we use the term in America, is really a misnomer. Because if you think about it, under legalization, there are people who can afford to pay the exorbitant licensing fees and whatnot to be a part of the legal system and to be a leader within the legal system. And there are, or, or even to work for one of those brothels. And there are people who can't afford to pay for it. Or there are people who, for one reason or another, are rejected for it. What are those people supposed to do? Because they're certainly not going to stop doing sex work. One thing that people need to keep in mind is that when, we, when you think about sex workers' rights, you have to think about sex workers' rights not only through the lens of if I were to go to a sex worker, this is the kind of sex worker I would go see. And they have to think of it in so far as, you know, not they have to think about it beyond if I were a sex worker, this is the kind of sex worker I would imagine myself to be. Because that's just not reality. Within sex work, there is a very broad spectrum of people that are doing that work. There is the very privileged, devastatingly beautiful, high-end escort courtesan types. And if you want to be ugly about it, they're also the very opposite of the end sex worker that when people think about an ugly stereotype about a sex worker that's what they think of 
they think about someone who is severely drug addicted, who is so severely drug addicted that they can't even function. They're the, the, there's people that do it for survival that are so poor that that is what they they resort to. And if those people are too poor to feed themselves or their own children, or they're too drug addicted to live a normal life. What makes anybody think those people can afford to pay the exorbitant fines and fees it would take to work in a brothel that takes sometimes more than 50% of your earnings and then you have to pay taxes on the rest of your earnings along with the extra vice tax you have to pay on yourself. Those people can't afford that and some of those people don't have the looks to operate within that system. And they still got to survive somehow. First and foremost, the sex workers' rights movement is a movement about harm reduction and human rights. Because what a lot of times it boils down to is poverty. And so the problem isn't prostitution. Prostitution is just another form of social currency. The problem is with the system. The problem is with the state of the economy in America and the way the system is set up. Which brings me to my second point. You know, people, another straw man line I've, I've heard throw around is that, you know, sex workers just want to deregulate everything and let the free market decide, trying to smear us in with those far-right, conservative people. Far-right libertarians. Now, this is just my opinion, but insofar as I understand the aims of the movement, to me, it looks a lot more left libertarian. But that's just me. I may be wrong. But that couldn't be more of a straw man smear. I mean, it's almost as if that person is stupid or being deliberately misleading. And to know why I think that, all one has to do is look at the state of labor rights in America today. Because the Nevada model is sort of like a mini, mini scale of that. That's what the Nevada model is. You know, the way our system, our economic system is set up to favor the very privileged and corporations or people and, you know, big corporations don't really have to pay that much taxes. Warren Buffett pay, pays less taxes than his secretary and, you know, and lobbyists and all of that bullshit, everything that the Occupy movement was out there protesting. I mean, look look at Wisconsin a few years ago. Wisconsin was one of the fiercest um, labor rights states there was, collective bargaining states there was, had their collective bargaining rights stripped the F away from them. And it's, it's getting bigger. It's snowballing. More and more labor rights are lost every single day. What would make any intelligent person think that sex workers would fight to be a part of a system like that? The difference between the decriminalized, decriminalized system, which from what I understand is best... Um, the best example of it is New South Wales, which a lot of people who oppose the sex workers' rights movement tend to ignore, not so unconspicuously. And the Nevada model as it exists in America is that <clears throat> the decrim system that many sex workers' rights advocates are fighting for is very much a labor rights heavy system. Under that system, 
sex workers can, you know, the the fees and the licensing licensing fees or this or getting certified is a lot more affordable. Um, under that system, sex workers can come together in small groups like Sex in the City, you know, like four or five sex workers and work together for the sake of, you know, better business and for the sake of keeping um, pimps, what the, the stereotypical pimp from exploiting their labor and for mutual safety, physical safety. People who say they don't like pimps, but then they want to put in place or spread out the Nevada model, <clears throat> don't know what the F they're talking about. Because the Nevada model is a model that very much empowers what people would call the pimps, the brothel owners the already privileged and powerful who can afford to pay exorbitant licensing, licensing fees to open a brothel and then every sex worker under their command has to pay exorbitant fees to work. That's not what we want. No. Not good enough. Insufficient. Eh, you fail. So there's a couple of videos below. The first link will be to Amy's video, which was made years ago and clears up this issue pretty thoroughly and who many people throwing the straw around have already seen. Anyway, um, I suggest people go back and watch it. There's also a couple of other links that I think people should go and watch. Listen to, I'll find a report to throw down there, but thank you for your time and your interest in this issue. And hi, Exile! Mm -hmm.